Welcome to Recovery Talks, a Fairbanks podcast where experts from Fairbanks Treatment and Recovery Center, located in Indianapolis, Indiana, take time to discuss unique aspects of addiction, substance use disorder, and recovery. I'm your host, Kathleen Gill. I've worked at Fairbanks since 2007, and I am a woman in long-term recovery. Joining me today on Recovery Talks is Barb Elliott. Barb is the president and CEO of Fairbanks. Barb, thanks for sharing your time with me. I'd love to have you tell me a little bit about your professional background and how you came to work at Fairbanks. Sure, I'd love to talk to you about that. My background is really accounting and finance. I worked 23 years at St. Vincent and kind of grew up there. The way I came to Fairbanks was the previous CEO, Helene Cross, talked to me about the mission and the passion, and I have a brother-in-law who's in recovery, so very passionate about the mission. So started there about 11 years ago and have been CEO for almost two years now. So what did you do for the first nine years of your career at Fairbanks? So I was actually using my background in accounting and finance. I was the chief financial officer. For people who don't know, can you please give us a little bit of background about Fairbanks on the whole? Yeah, Fairbanks is going to be celebrating its 75th anniversary here in two years. Um, It is a not-for-profit agency. I'm proud to say we're part of United Way helping serve the community. Uh, Our mission is really treatment um, for people, those who have substance abuse issues, but we're really focused on recovery and helping people. Tell me about the services that are provided at Fairbanks. Yeah, we have a long continuum of care. So we start out with preventative education. We have inpatient and outpatient services. Um, We have supported housing for individuals who are going to our outpatient services. And I think one of our most important programs is our recovery management program. It is so important for people to stay connected in their recovery. Because as we say, if you can stay connected for a year, you can cut down on that recidivism rate almost 30%. We also have a couple of long-term residential facilities, um, one for men and one for women. Um, We do gender-specific programming for adolescents, young adults, um, adult females, and males. We have a women's long-term facility in Shelbyville, Indiana, and also a men's facility in Westfield. What does continuum of care mean, and why is it important? Yeah, it really means there's a long continuum. People can not, it's a very individualized treatment. So some people may need inpatient services. Some people may need just the outpatient services. But it gives you the availability. If you do need that wide array of services, again, you can start with preventive education all the way to that recovery management program. And then the access center is also free for people who are struggling to uh, get connected or if or determine if they are struggling with a problem. Absolutely, we provide a free assessment up front, so it really assesses what level of treatment do you really need. Great, and of course, my involvement with Fairbanks is the alumni relations officer, and so that you mentioned that one year of uh, staying connected, and there are a lot of programs and services that we have through the alumni program to encourage people to keep coming back and staying connected through some of our fabulous events that we're doing. Yeah, last year I think we had over 270 volunteers and they're coming back helping us in so many ways, working in our gift shop and the coffee shop. So it's not only great for Fairbanks, but it's great for those individuals to stay connected with the facility. Not only does it help their recovery, but it, it it helps our patients in the early recovery, but it helps their recovery as well. So. so tell me about the accreditation that Fairbanks has, and why is Fairbanks the expert in recovery? Yeah, so we're accredited by the National Association of Treatment Providers, which is a national organization. 
Um, they have been really working on accrediting only facilities that are certified. Um, we go through a joint commission process that's very thorough. Um, we're also a member of the Department of Mental Health. So it's really, really important that providers are certified, getting care from licensed um, professionals, and that you're getting quality care. Fairbanks is just one of two centers in Indiana designated as an accredited provider by the National Association of Addiction Treatment Providers. Barb, what does that mean and why is that important? Yeah, you want to make sure you're receiving quality care, and that really gives you the designation that you have licensed certified professionals that are providing that quality care. Uh, NATAB has been very careful to certify only those providers. Um, you want to make sure you're not getting someone who's going to fly you to Florida free for 30 days and think you're going to get fixed. This is a long-term recovery process. It's a disease that really needs that long-term recovery. Well, and it's hard when you come back into a community uh, and you leave all of your recovery resources behind. And so if you're right in your community, that helps as well. Yeah. So I want to put in a little plug for the Fairbanks Alumni and Volunteer Program because that is a, an amazing way to stay connected um, and be a part of the recovery community. There is more and more opportunities in Indianapolis, and Fairbanks has been quite the leader in a lot of uh, the events. For instance, we turn the canal purple in honor of National Recovery Month, and Fairbanks was a leader with a number of other partnerships, uh, partnering organizations there. Our alumni program really provides a lot of fun and interactive things and safe and sober events for people to come back and participate in. Yeah, I think we had our volunteers, you know, a lot of those alumni provided over like 12,000 hours of service this last year, um, just doing various activities around the facility from the coffee shop to the gift shop and things like that. So Barb, tell me how Fairbanks supports the local community. Yeah, we've touched probably over 24,000 lives over this last year, either through education or treatment or outreach. We provided charity care to the community of around 1.4 million, which is about 3% of our gross revenue. And really proud to say that this is almost three times the average that Indiana hospitals provide. So very important that we can help those in the community as much as we can. A lot of people think that Fairbanks is uh, self-pay and that they can't afford it. No, we provide, you know, we do have commercial insurance, but there's also self-pay, um, Medicare, Medicaid, so we provide a, a variety of services. Do you find stigma to be one of the biggest barriers for people to come and get treatment? Yes, absolutely. I think that's one of the biggest issues we continue to deal with. Um, we talk a lot about addiction being a disease, um, just like heart disease or diabetes. Again, it's a brain disease that we have to treat, and that recovery process is so important. It affects everybody. Somebody knows a family member, a friend, a coworker that's been affected by addiction. A lot of people think, you know, just the poor are affected. And that's not true, you know. They want to say, just pick up your bootstraps and move on. And we know that's not true. So we really have to work on the stigma issue. Tell us a little bit about what you offer from a clinical standpoint. So again, we have licensed um, social workers. We, um, we have a psychiatric nurse practitioner and two licensed addictionologists. So a wide variety of care. What is unique about Fairbanks and its operations? I think we try to be cutting edge with the latest innovative programs that we can provide. For instance, the latest programs we're looking at is telehealth. Um, we're doing telepsychiatry where we're able to provide psychiatric services off-site. People have a lot of trouble with transportation or getting to the facilities, so we want to be able to go out in the community, and that will allow us to do that. We're also looking at um, our intensive outpatient that we can provide at home. 
which is individual therapy. Again, really for professionals that maybe are traveling or can't get to the facility. So we think that's very unique. More of a Skype kind of a concept? That's exactly right. Okay. So you can see each other, you know, the psychiatrist can see the movements of the individual and really can just talk to each other and see each other. Okay, that's interesting. And then there's a new program called Origins. Tell me a little bit about Origins. Yeah, that's our trauma program. We know that women are affected especially with trauma, which is usually related to some of their substance abuse issues. Um, we have an employer services program that we just started a new division maybe six months ago. We know employers are having trouble with their workforce with turnover and absenteeism and things like that. So we really want to proactively help employers to help their employees up front to try to treat addiction as soon as we can. We know it not only helps the employee, but it also helps the employer to cut back on health care costs. Fairbanks is coming up on its 75th year in business. And my understanding is that in 1945, when what was Indiana Home for Men at that point in time opened its doors, you provided services to men and only alcoholic men at that point in time. You've come a long way, haven't you? So from there, we started providing for care for women. Um, we also added the treatment for adolescents. And the expansion's been just immense. As there is so much coverage in the media about the opioid crisis that's going on, what is the most prevalent substance use that you folks are seeing at Fairbanks? So I would say there's prescription drug use, there's heroin, but we still see alcohol is the number one issue we're dealing with. How is Fairbanks unique compared to other treatment facilities? Well, I think one of the uh, facilities we have people are just not aware of yet is Hope Academy. It's a mayor-sponsored charter high school for grades 9 through 12. We're really trying to help um, kids that have recovery issues with alcohol and drugs. They even receive a core 40 diploma when they graduate they from. Absolutely do. And I think a misnomer is people don't understand it's tuition free. Great. So if someone is concerned about themselves or a loved one, what should they do? You want to seek treatment in an accredited facility, a licensed professional. Um, again, as we talked with NATAB, you can go on their website and look at accredited facilities that are available. It doesn't have to be Fairbanks. We just want you to seek help. And the free assessment that is in the Access Center, that is a great first place to start. That is absolutely right. You're well aware of the motto of Together We Can at Fairbanks. Barb, how would you finish that statement? Together we can what? Together we can live a life of recovery. Together we can overcome addiction. And together we can make a difference. Thank you very much for your time with me this afternoon. Thanks again, Barb, for joining us. We appreciate all that you do for Fairbanks and the local recovery community. This has been Recovery Talks, a Fairbanks podcast. If you or a loved one needs support in the journey of recovery, the experts at Fairbanks Treatment and Recovery Center are here for you. To learn more about Fairbanks, visit our website, at FairbanksRecovery.org or call 800-225-4673. That's 800-225-HOPE for immediate help. Thanks for listening.